OK, so what I've done here is to make a little rig. I've got this image and I've split it into two and displayed the frame number on both of them a little before and after. Just to demonstrate, I'm going to throw down a multiply on one branch and there you have it. So it's a useful little way of demonstrating these two nodes which I want to show you. The first being the frame hold. Instantly the mixing was done with a, a key mix which is quite a sweet little node for blending two streams together according to a uh, rectangle here which is this rectangle or according to an alpha so you supply a, a, an alpha of some kind and then you mix uh, two streams together that way and that way and there's your alpha anyway I digress let's go back to there now when you first hold a uh, load up a frame hold it's a bit disconcerting everything goes black now let's get some action if we put in what what we have is, is two boxes there first frame and increment first frame is where the effect starts from and the increment is how much how uh, how does the frame how does the timeline advance from there now if both those values are set to 1 we have no change okay if I set that to 0 it essentially freezes in this instance at frame 1 let's set that to say 20 okay so it's it's quite a useful thing for freezing freezing frames but perhaps more usefully it's actually first frame on 0 and then increment on 10 now let's go over here frame 10 20 30 40 50 you see that the one on the right is advancing every 10 frames Now you'll notice in order to get that to happen I had to set this value the first frame to zero. Zero has a position in, in the timing world. Um, zero Frame zero is often regarded as the first frame if you see what I mean. Um, if I'd set it to one it'll be advancing in these kind of odd increments of 10 plus 1 which might be what you want now how useful is that well if you're doing a test render I can tell you something uh, Nuke doesn't do test renders brilliantly in that if you want to render out every if you've got a very complex animation of some kind um, you're very demanding in terms of processing and you want to, you, 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 uh, you think it's going to take too long to render every single frame, let's render out every fifth frame, which is quite a common occurrence. It's something that you quite often want. Uh, this is the way that you do it. You place a little frame hold just before your render output. Okay, so that's frame hold. Let's get rid of that. And the next one is... Oh, keep on, close. Time offset. Our time offset is simplicity itself. It just, let's say, minus 20, and there we go. Now, again, when we write in minus 20, what we're doing is not saying I want it to be 20 frames slower we're saying to the playhead okay you're at say frame 200 I want you to look minus 20 back for the frame that you should be reading so uh, it in fact makes it um, faster slightly non-intuitive 
nothing you can't get used to. So those are two very useful frames, the uh, useful nodes, the um, uh, the frame hold and the uh, time offset, which will take your one to three hundred clip there and move it this way or indeed the other way any amount that you want value x okay very useful very useful indeed